Hello, kings and queens and everyone in between. My name is JJ and welcome to SkinCraft. Today, we're going to be talking about pigment, whether it's sunspots, melasma, or random dark patches that just showed up out of nowhere. Most people are left asking the same question. Should I do IPL or laser? Today, we're going to be breaking it all down, which laser works best for which concern, and how to avoid treatments that can actually make things worse. So what causes sunspots, melasma, and pigment? Before you go blasting your skin with light or laser, let's decode what we're actually treating. Sunspots come from UV damage over time. Think years of sun exposure finally catching up. While melasma, on the other hand, is typically more hormonally driven and can be triggered by pregnancy, birth control, or even intense heat. It can be super tricky to treat, and it's much more common than you think. And then there's PIH, or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This can occur from post-acneic pigmentation, eczema, or even bug bites. All three look like brown spots, but they live in different layers of the skin, and they all respond very differently to treatment. So let's take a look at our first treatment on the service menu, IPL, or Intense Pulse Light. Although often referred to as laser, IPL is actually a broad spectrum of light that's attracted to brown, yellow, and green pigment within the skin. It works by delivering bursts of light that will break up your melanocyte clusters, so that your body can then naturally clear them away. Over the course of 7-10 to 10 days post-treatment, you'll notice your sunspots are actually getting darker. What? They'll then lightly crust over and form a coffee ground-like effect before they ultimately fall away and they're permanently gone. Okay! IPL is best suited to treat sunspots, unwanted freckles, and redness within the skin. Although IPL isn't attracted to red pigment within the skin, it can be very helpful at collapsing broken capillaries or little facial veins, and once those canals have been collapsed, your body naturally reabsorbs the blood and the broken capillaries fade away. However, IPL does have its limitations, as it's only suitable for skin types 1 through 3 on the Fitzpatrick scale out of a total of 7 tones. So this treatment is not ideal for darker skin types, and it's certainly not ideal for melasmatic patients. For patients with naturally darker skin tones, IPL can actually trigger an inflammation response and therefore exacerbate melasma or even cause burns. Think of IPL like a flashlight. It covers a larger amount of area as opposed to laser platforms. However, IPL's wavelength is typically much shorter than lasers and therefore won't be able to properly treat melasma as melasma grows in the deepest layers of our skin. I have had patients come and consult with me and had disclosed to me that other dermatological clinics and med spas and plastic surgery centers had treated their melasma with IPL but only exacerbated the issue. This is because IPL can only tackle superficial pigment, and therefore it only treats the top of melasma and it will continue to pull melasma out of the deeper depths of the skin and release it into the superficial layers where it stays. So what treatments can you do if you have melasma? Well, lasers. Lasers are a whole different vehicle. They're super focused and typically have a much deeper wavelength. They act more like a sniper against pigment than a flashlight. There's typically three classes of lasers that somebody with sun damage or melasma would seek out if they're looking to mitigate those issues. First up is a Q-switched laser. Q-switched lasers target pigment very quickly. They're great for age spots and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. However, Q-switched lasers can generate a lot of heat within the skin and therefore is not ideal for melasmatic patients. Fractionated or fractional lasers, on the other hand, can help to sweep away unwanted pigment as well. However, they typically come with a little bit more downtime because they're also resurfacing the exterior of the skin. And because fractional lasers do generate quite a bit of heat within the skin as well, they're typically not the best suited for melasma either. Which brings us to Pico laser. Pico lasers break pigments such as melasma and sunspots into tiny little particles. This is most ideal for deep or stubber pigment, and Pico typically generates the least amount of heat so it shouldn't exacerbate your melasma. When consulting with my patients regarding melasma, I'll typically put them on a pretreatment protocol to help arrest and subdue the melanocyte production that's causing the pigment in the first place. Once my melasmatic patient has undergone a predetermined amount of pretreatment, I then typically refer them to Pico laser to help break up that dense, deep, stubborn pigment. So laser platforms are better suited to treat stubborn pigment, deeper pigment, or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation than IPL. It's also very important to pick a provider that understands the settings to use that won't cause a rebound effect within your pigment. So yes, lasers are very powerful, but they need to be precisely matched to your skin type and concern. So let's recap and compare IPL versus laser. IPL and laser are both great at treating sunspots. However, IPL is not suited to treat melasma and only a few lasers can claim they can. IPL is also not best suited to treat post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. However, laser can get the job done. In terms of downtime, IPL poses a lower risk while lasers will vary dependent on platform. And last but not least, IPL is better suited for lighter skin tones while some laser platforms can handle a plethora of skin tones. If you have sun damage but lighter skin, IPL could be your bestie. For deeper pigment or PIH, lasers are typically more effective. Now let's quickly touch on common mistakes and misconceptions when it comes to laser platforms. More treatments don't mean better results. And using the wrong energy in the wrong way can equal a disaster. <gasps> As mentioned before, treating melasma with IPL can exacerbate the issue. And over-treating with lasers can cause inflammation and potentially worsen the pigment. And not pre-treating, using SPF, or post-treating properly can equal a wasted treatment. 
So how do you choose the right treatment for your concern and skin type? Let's go over a list of questions that you can have handy to ask your provider. One, is this platform safe for my skin type? You're going to want to look out for an educated and customized answer based upon your skin type and concerns. This will give you peace of mind that you're in the right hands. Two, are we treating sunspots or melasma? It's crucial that your provider is able to diagnose you with the proper skincare disorder. This will ensure that they're able to prescribe you the proper treatment platform. Three, will you patch test first? Although it's not always necessary to patch test an area of the skin that you're looking to treat with IPL or laser, as a good rule of thumb, if the provider isn't sure if they're able to successfully treat you or your concern, it might be a good idea to patch test and come back another day for a full service as long as you didn't have any adverse reaction. Four. What skincare do I need before and after my treatment? When dealing with unwanted pigment, it can be extremely beneficial to pre-treat the skin with an appropriate topical solution. Certain pre-treatment protocols can help arrest melanocyte production from going any further, help to calm and subdue existing pigment, and help to condition the skin to receive the laser's energy at an optimal level. And you can't forget about post-treatment skincare. It's important to use calming and non-stimulating post-care solutions. These will help to mitigate any redness or inflammation within the skin and expedite healing. Pigment is multifaceted and very nuanced, and there's no one-size-fits-all approach. So picking the right provider with the right pre- and post-care as well as the right platform can do you a world of good. Now let's shift focus to quickly go over at-home IPL devices. During consultations, I've had some patients tell me they tried to clear up pigment on their own at home with IPL devices they purchased online. And although I think at-home IPL devices can be very beneficial at subduing unwanted hair growth, I don't recommend them for treating pigment within the skin. Although at-home IPL devices are much weaker than in-clinic treatments, you still want to be extremely careful with unwanted pigment. I've had a few patients worsen the pigment within their skin by using at-home IPL devices. It's best to leave unwanted facial pigment in the hands of a professional. Now let's go over some skincare that you can use at home to protect your investment post-service. 1. Tranexamic Acid Tranexamic acid is a wonderful topical solution that can be used to help subdue melanocyte production. It's ideal for melasmatic patients and anyone dealing with sun damage. And unlike some bleaching creams, it's suitable for daytime use. 2. Azelaic Acid Azelaic acid is great as a gentle exfoliant, but it will also help to subdue unwanted pigmentation within the skin. It's not too harsh, and it's suitable for AM and PM use depending on the SPF you're using. 3. Niacinamide I typically look at niacinamide as a booster to the aforementioned acids, but it's a great standalone product as well depending on how deep your pigment can be. 4. Lactic or Mandelic Acid Lactic acid is a great topical that will help to microexfoliate the skin, but it will also help draw moisture into the skin as well. It's great for daily microexfoliation and can be paired with mandelic acid for a stronger effect. And five, wear your SPF. If you want to prevent sun damage or prevent existing sun damage or melasma from going any further, you need to wear your SPF, especially when you're running around in a sunny climate and you want to make sure to reapply every two to four hours. If you're unsure about what pigment you could be dealing with, drop a comment down below and I'll try to help you through your journey. If you've enjoyed or learned something from today's video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Okay guys, see you in the next one.